Hello and welcome to another information literacy video. Today we're going to talk about primary versus secondary versus tertiary sources. Tertiary sources are not always included. Um, those of you taking the class, your book doesn't mention tertiary and sometimes uh, when we get there I'll tell you sometimes people classify them as secondary, sometimes they classify them as tertiary, so I just wanted to throw that into this video in case you stumble across it. So primary sources, uh, they're the closest to the actual event, time period, individual in question. They have not been edited, uh, interpreted, or evaluated in any way that might change the original information. And that's really important. The point of a primary source really is to present original thinking, observations, and research. Uh, and that's when we're dealing with doing research. But uh, you might not think you interact with primary sources that often, but that's really where we live our day to day. Uh, all interpersonal communication that we're living and experiencing live in real time is a primary source. You know, the emails we send, the tweets we send, the photos we upload to Instagram, meetings, interviews, speeches, uh, those are all primary sources. So how does that differ from a secondary source? Well, the point of a secondary source is to do something to a primary source, examine it, evaluate it, critique it, interpret it, reflect on it, uh, in order to you know, reuse that information in, for another purpose, to restate it in a different way, to present a, your point of view or a reflection on it. Uh, one of the important things to note is that you know, when we're doing research, generally speaking, secondary sources are much more available, but we have to evaluate them uh, critically to ensure that care has been taken to maintain the integrity of the original information, the original point of view. Uh, when you're doing uh, formal research uh, or if you're just Googling something to find the answer, I recommend that you find both a primary source and a secondary source. Examine both, cite both of them in your research if you're doing some formalized research. Uh, the difference, you know, if we're talking about um, a, a real example, uh, would be you know, a primary source would be the president's State of the Union address, right? Watching it live, hearing it from his mouth. That address, that speech is a primary source. When it's over with, all of the news is going to be analyzing that speech as to what it means for the country and the world. That news coverage, uh, even though it's very close to the time of the event, is examining, interpreting, and reflecting on the speech, therefore making it a primary source. So what the heck is a tertiary source? Now, like I said earlier, they're not always listed. You know, sometimes people just say there's primary and secondary. But if you stumble across this, usually the definition is that it's another step removed from the original. Uh, typically, these are collections. Uh, some of these can be considered as secondary sources, but it just depends really on the particular source. So for example, Wikipedia as a body of articles or any encyclopedia as a body of articles uh, can be considered a tertiary source. A textbook on a variety of subjects that collects uh, multiple primary and secondary sources into one unit can be considered a tertiary source. Or a database that's a collection of many primary and secondary sources can be considered a tertiary source. I found this great table in the links in the comments below from the University of Maryland. Uh, so a big shout out to them. I thought this was perfect. So there's more categories on their website, but I just pulled out three to help uh, make the example. Uh, so you can see here a painting would be a primary, but uh, an article critiquing the painting would be secondary. And then that database that allows you to search both for paintings and critiques would be a tertiary. A diary versus a, a bio or an autobiography of a person versus a physics textbook, which is going to catalog that person's writings, that person's research, as well as many other people's writings and research. Uh, so definitely check out that link from the University of Maryland. I think it's a great uh, primer on all of this in addition to what you can find in your textbook. Thanks for watching.